What's happening, hobby people? My name is Jacob from the Dry Paint Pot, and this week we're going to try to replicate a really cool base that I found on the Green Stuff World website. So stick around. Okay, so let's talk for a minute. If you've been with the channel for a while, you probably remember my Green Stuff World unboxing video that I did a few weeks back. Now, if you haven't seen that video, I highly suggest that you watch it and I'll link it up top because it'll help explain what we're doing today. Now, just a quick refresher, I hate my Death Watch army. Watch your profanity. I love the models, I hate how they look. Since they were my first 40k army, they were based very poorly. I was so excited to get into the hobby that I wanted to try every type of different basing that I can do and different techniques and I just had a lot of fun with it, which was great. I'm so glad that I had so much fun trying different techniques and new styles, but because of it, when I put my models on the table, they all look very disorganized and very mixed matched. So I decided to give them a major facelift and redo all of their bases. So I spent like two days exploring the Green Stuff World website until I found a few different bases that I really wanted to replicate. And I finally narrowed it down to one. This base right here is what I want my entire army to be standing on. I love the design of it and I think I can replicate it. So I bought all of the materials that I needed. I contacted Green Stuff World. I got the colors that they used and I feel like I can do it. But it got me thinking, how many people like me go on the Green Stuff World website or the Games Workshop website and they see these different bases and they think, I can do that. And then they try to go do it and it's way harder than they thought. Almost impossible. It's like, how did they do that? That's crazy. So today we're going to see how difficult it is to replicate one of Green Stuff World's example bases. Now I fully understand that some bases are much more difficult to build than others. And since this one has so many different types of texture and requires so many different materials to make it, I figure it's a good one to give a shot. So let's get things started and see if an average hobbyist like me can replicate one of these bases. Now today's build is going to be using 90% of Green Stuff World products. Now this video is not sponsored in any way by Green Stuff World. But Green Stuff World, if you want to sponsor your boy, hook it up. Let me know. Email me. Call me. Text me. Make it happen. But anyway, the reason why I have this dreadnought here is because the example from Green Stuff World uses a larger base than the standard 34mm that the Space Marines were on. But since I am rebasing my entire army, I need to try this in a smaller scale. So today I'm going to both make a version in 34mm and 90mm, which I believe is the size that they use in their example. And I figured it was perfect to use this dreadnought because I never finished them. So it's no big deal if I rebase right now. Now, if you like to replicate the base that I'm making today, just know that you don't have to follow my steps perfectly. There was no guide that I'm following, so I'm kind of just picking out different parts of the base and building them depending on what's going to take the longest to dry or heat or whatever. And also, I am using FIMO clay. You do not have to use FIMO. You can use green stuff, you can use any other um, like epoxy clay that you have. Just know that the one I'm using today is FIMO. I heard it shrinks very little and you can bake it in the oven, which I think will speed up the process. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is make the bricks and the small bricks for the base. And with that, I'm going to use some FIMO clay. Now, the reason why I'm doing this first is the clay needs to harden in the oven. And that's going to take at least 30 minutes. And I don't even know how long it's going to take to put this together. So I want to do that first because it also needs some time to dry afterwards. And in the meantime, while that's drying, we can work on some other places on the base. Now, I do not have any uh, thin wire to cut this clay, so I'm just going to use these steel scrapers from Green Stuff World. And I'm going to start with just this much. I don't know if this is too much or too little, but we'll have to see. Again, this is my very first time doing this. So, ooh, ew, it's kind of like crumbly. It's not very soft. I don't know if that's bad or good or what. I don't know how I can like knead this. This is kind of weird. 
Huh, well, this is strange. So when I pull this apart, it sort of just tears like that. I don't know if that's supposed to be the way it works, but it's definitely weird. The clay that I've always used is fairly uh, moist when you first get it, so to have it like this is just very strange. Stand up for this. All right, so it's sort of coming together, but man, this stuff is not, it's not very easy to work with. You know what? I don't know if Fimo clay is gonna be it for me. This is really tough to try to just get to smooth out. I might have to end up just working with some green stuff instead. Okay, so the FIMO clay was way too difficult to work with. I'm going to have to do a little research on that to see if I'm either doing something wrong or it had gone bad. So we're going to turn to classic green stuff, which I do know how to work with. So this should be a lot easier. Oh, and I have this Sculptor Vaseline, which is pretty cool. Again, this is from uh, Green Stuff World. And it should make sculpting this a lot easier. Oh, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Okay, now that our green stuff is very green, I'm gonna just break off some of this and try to mash them into these molds. I really hope this works, because again, I was expecting to use the clay for this, and I know that with a good soft clay, it should fill in all the gaps, but I don't know how it's gonna work with this. So, let's see. <laughs> okay, well, it definitely molds, uh, I just can't get it to, to stay in there. I think since I put all of the, um, the Sculptor Vaseline or whatever it is, Sculptor, Sculptor, no, oh, Sculptor Vaseline. Yeah, since I put all that in there, it's, uh, wanted to just pop out, which I guess I could just pop them out early, but I really want them to, to stick and stay. So let me test it with two. So you're supposed to be able to just put something like green stuff in there, mash it all down, and then use a scraper, which I did purchase, and scrape away the excess. And as you see, that did not work out as planned. Huh. Okay, so I am able to get the green stuff to stick. Oh, there we go. With some sculptor jelly, I can kind of just wipe away the excess. That's not bad. I guess it just requires a little bit of trial and error. Now I don't have enough green stuff here for the big base, so I'm going to focus on the little one for right now. And we're going to cover up about that much. All right, so I rolled right onto the base. That seemed to work out pretty good. So now I'm going to try using this texture pen. And God, wish me luck. Careful, SpongeBob! SpongeBob! Careful! Careful, SpongeBob! Careful, SpongeBob! Careful, SpongeBob! Careful, SpongeBob! Oh, how cool is that? That is so freaking cool. Check that out. That is so neat. Okay. So that worked, that definitely worked. So once this dries, I'm gonna cut along the edge, get all the remaining green stuff off of here, and hopefully we'll get a nice looking base. In the meantime, let me try to use the rest of this and see if I can do something with this base. All right, just a quick progress update. This is taking a lot more green stuff than I thought it would. It's almost taken the entire pack that I have. So if you're planning on doing one of these bases with green stuff, it's going to cost you like a lot of money it's gonna it, you're gonna spend your life savings on green stuff so i definitely suggest finding a good clay that works for you although the fimo didn't work out today uh, i'm going to try to see if i can get it to work another time or i'll just use a different type of clay because this is going to be ridiculous i, I can't see using this much green stuff just on one base if i'm going to redo my entire army it just won't be cost efficient
Okay, so now that I have everything covered in green stuff, we now have to wait for it to dry. And that's going to take a little while, so I'm gonna check in on it every 45 minutes to an hour until it's completely cured, and then we can get back to working with it and finish up this base. A few moments later. All right, now it's been about three hours, and the green stuff, I believe, is cured enough. Uh, it's not 100% cured, at least I don't think so, but I believe it's cured enough to where you know, it's not gonna keep shrinking or anything like that. So I think it's all good to start working with. And I went ahead and worked ahead a little bit and just trimmed off the sides and cleaned everything up. This way we don't have any weird overhang. Now, checking out the bricks, these were the ones that I used a lot of the Sculptor Vaseline with. I use less with these, and this is liquid green stuff. And I thought it would test them all to see which one is the best. Now, hands down, I think liquid green stuff is the worst. Yeah, a lot of little little bubbles, and it really shrunk, a lot of shrinkage. So I don't like that. Let's check out the very first one that we did. That is very nice, a little glossy, no big deal, just clean up the edges. And for these, I can probably pop out a whole bunch of them. Oh yeah, it's very easy, there we go. And these are equally as good. A couple imperfections, but it makes it look more realistic. So all in all, um, taking my time with it and adding a little more Sculptor Vaseline did help out, but these are also very good. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop all these out, clean them up, and we'll go to the next step. Okay, so now the bricks are all glued down. And this is where I'm gonna have to deviate from the picture a little bit because I have some gaps over here on the side as well as over here. And I don't wanna leave them the texture of the base because uh, Citadel bases have a very specific texture to them and I don't want that to show. So what I'm gonna do is use some Citadel texture paint to fill in these spots, let that dry, and then we're gonna start painting. All right, so the Astral Granite is down. Everything's looking great. The only thing which, uh, it, it made me so frustrated. <sighs> I realized that these bricks compared to the pictures are sideways. So they're supposed to be in this direction, but instead are this way. And it sucks that Green Stuff World shows the example with them being this way, because when you roll the rolling pin, it rolls in this direction. So it's not gonna be exactly like the example, but it's gonna be close enough. So we're gonna go ahead and let this astro granite sit overnight so it can fully dry. And tomorrow morning, I'm gonna go ahead and prime this all gray and we're gonna get painting. All right, so it is a new day and we are back to these bases. So I got these all primed up already and I really like how they're coming together. I think this uniform color really brings together all the different textures and it's starting to really take shape. So I have a reference photo that I'm gonna be looking at, trying to figure out what colors to use and uh, what to put where, and we're just gonna go at it and give it a shot. Now I have all of these colors right here. I'll probably need more, but this is at least where I'm starting off at because within the stones, you can see that some of them have like a green stain where some of them have a little bit of pinks and some reds. So I'm gonna do a lot of mixing. A lot of different colors are gonna come together and I'm just gonna name off some important ones while I work. And if you'd like a list of those paints, just let me know in the comments section below. But without further ado, let's get painting. So I started things off with a mixture of White Scar, Celestra Gray, Corax White, and a pinch of Averland Sunset. And everything's looking pretty good. Um, I was then going to go in and individually paint each brick with some Corax White and a little bit of White Scar, but I think it would be easier and closer to the photo if I did some dry brushing um, all the way up to White Scar and then did a lot of weathering after that. I think washes are gonna be my friend with this project, but there's only one way to find out. So we're just gonna give it a shot and see how that works out. So I have some Corax White now on my dry brush, and we're just gonna go over all of these bricks, trying to focus on the ones that stick up the most. I'm now going to do some spot washing with some Ethonian Camo Shade. Give that a shot, because there are some patches of green in there that I think are just washed, if not glazed. 
And by the end of this, I will do a final coat in Gnome Oil. And hopefully that won't, won't kill the green. Let's see, we'll give it a shot. I'm just gonna go real light and focus in on some of these areas like this. Now with an old frayed brush, I'm gonna dip it into the Athonian camo shade, get most of the wash off, and then since the bristles are going in all sorts of different directions, when I pull, it should leave these nice streaky lines. There we go. All over. I'm gonna focus these lines right around the areas that I put most of the green wash. So like over here, right over here, here, and right over here. So I'm now going to do the exact same thing, but this time with some Agrax Earthshade. So I'm first going to uh, take a bunch of the wash and focus it in on a few different stones, and then I'm going to go back with this old beat-up brush and basically do a dry brush of wash, just all over, especially in the areas that have a high concentration of the wash. All right, I'm not gonna cover this all in Nuln Oil. Let that seep into all the recesses. We'll see where we're going, and then maybe just do some uh, dry brushing after that, and some spot washing. And hopefully that'll really bring all the color together. Oh man, I really like this. This is so good. I was nervous that it wouldn't come together, but this is looking so cool. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I was really struggling with this project. I was thinking like, it just wasn't working out and I wasn't too happy with the results so far, but this right here makes it all worthwhile. This is, this is so good. I'm loving this. All right, so this thing is heavily washed. And before we go back and lighten up the stones, we have to wait for it to fully dry. So in the meantime, I'm gonna jump over to these bricks and it looks as though they have a little bit of a red tone to them, a little bit of brown too. So I'm thinking Steel Legion Drab, Tuscor Fur, Celestra Gray, and some Quarax White. Might even add a little bit of this uh, Kisla Flesh, but we'll see. So I'm just going to start mixing things together, find a uh, color that's pretty close to the example, and throw that down. All right, now all of those are painted. It took way too long, but they're all set. Now I can start doing a little bit of weathering and add, adding some uh, color in there. But before I do that, I'm gonna jump right back over here and start lightening up all these stones because I know it's gonna take me a while and I just wanna get it done. <laughs> Okay, so looking at the stones again, I'm not completely happy with them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dry brush with some Quarax White over main areas, main large areas that should be white. And hopefully that'll just lighten things up enough. So for these bricks, I'm going to try a variety of colors, including some Tuscor Fur, Steel Legion Drab, and I'm thinking a little bit of Wa Flesh. Just going to mix up some greens and reds and then finish it all off with a nice wash of Agrax Earthshade and then a little bit of known oil. Now the difficult part about remaking the space is there are so many colors involved, again, that I do not know. When I asked what colors were used, I was told um, a couple different kits, but with those kits, you know, there are so many colors that come with it. So I don't know exactly what colors they used, so I'm kind of just winging it. So I could keep working on this forever, but I think I'm gonna have to call it quits on the bricks. Because a wise hobbyist once told me, eventually you gotta know when to stop and just move on to the next project. And this is just taking me way too long. So I'm content with the bricks and now I'm going to move on to adding the gravel 
all along the edges and doing the tufts. Okay, we are now ready for the hobby sand and I purchased the thin version because it looked pretty close to the picture. And to do so, it says all we need is some PVA glue. So I have some of this uh, tacky glue and it is super thick and I think it'll do the job. So I'm just gonna throw some down like this. Oh yeah, that's that's super tacky. Okay, I have I have faith that this will hold all of the uh, all of the sand. You know what? I think I might just apply it right to the base and then spread it. Let's see how that works. Okay, that's actually really good. All right, so now that we have a nice even coat of that, I'm now going to apply some of the sand and hopefully it'll hold. Oh yeah, that is, that is awesome, cool. So it seemed to work pretty well. Oh, just messed up that corner a little bit, but there we go, throw some more down. And that is what we get at the end. I think it looks pretty good. There are some areas that are a little patchy, but I did start with the Astro Granite underneath, so hopefully anything that shows isn't too, uh, isn't too bad. It's going to do the same exact thing, just around the skull and around the little edges that have some gaps near the uh, bricks. All right, now there is the sand. I'm very pleased with this, very, very happy. Uh, I don't have a lot of pieces that are falling out, which is nice, just a few here and there, but I'm pretty sure it'll hold over time. I'm also going to put something over top to seal it. I don't know uh, what I might use just yet. Maybe my matte varnish, that might work out pretty well. Uh, and then I'm just gonna put the tufts down and the space is all set. I went ahead and did two coats of matte varnish just to make sure that none of the gravel falls out. And now that it's in there nice and solid, I think we're ready for the tufts. And these are just peel and stick. So they should be fairly easy to use. There we go, and our base is complete. And I'm actually really surprised. Um, well, I mean, I still need to paint the edge black, but I didn't think it was gonna turn out this good. I honestly was very unsure, especially once once I finished rolling this out, I was a little unsure, because I was like, oh my God, it's not even the right direction. But then once I started painting this, I was just, it was quite a struggle, especially trying to match these colors up for the bricks. But all in all, I'm very pleased with it. And although it's not perfect, like just perfect to the example, I think it's close enough. And I'm very, very happy. So let's answer the question that we asked earlier. Can the average hobbyist replicate one of these sample bases? Now, these are the types of bases that you see on the Green Stuff World website, that you see on the Games Workshop website, and the answer is no. The average hobbyist probably can, but a more skilled hobbyist definitely can. I definitely struggled building this base. I ran into tons of issues. I made a handful of mistakes. My colors aren't just right, but I'm very happy with how it turned out. And the thing is, I ended up using a lot of techniques that I didn't pick up until two or three years of being in the hobby. So if you're a casual painter or you've only been modeling for maybe six months or a year, this is going to be an extremely difficult project. But if you know some really good painting techniques and you're decent at sculpting, then I definitely believe that you can replicate these bases. So while it is difficult and time consuming, it is not impossible. So I'd like to give a huge shout out to my patrons, Leandrist, Che Phillips, CK, and The Dark Path. Thank you all so very much for your support. It means so much to me, you have no idea. And like I always say, it's your support that keeps these videos coming each week. And if you'd also like to help support the channel, get your hands on a new patron sticker that's coming out soon and all the other goodies that come along with being a patron, be sure to check out the link below. And if you'd like to just hang out and talk about the hobby, I'll also drop a link to my Discord down low too. So talking about the new patron sticker, this is what it looks like. These two new stickers are coming out soon. The patron sticker, of course, is exclusive for patrons, but the original dry paint pot sticker will be going up for sale along with the pothead sticker. Now I'll let you know in the upcoming weeks how you can get your hands on these stickers. And until then, let's check out this week's viewer submissions. 
Now this model is by Che Gavesa and it is so freaking fun. I don't know where you got this model, but this is so cool. So it's based on Starbucks coffee, which I think that's a macchiato, I think. I don't know what it is, but it looks really good. I've been in quarantine since like March, so Starbucks coffee right now sounds so freaking good. But back to the model, this is just so fun. I love the inspiration behind it. The colors are really fun. And I think it just came together really well. I don't imagine it's for any tabletop game, but I bet it looks so freaking cool on your shelf. Now be sure to share any of your work with me both on Instagram and Facebook at The Dry Pain Pot because I pick my favorites each week and I feature them in my upcoming videos. No wash your brushes, clean your paint pots, and keep on painting. <laughs>